It is Mizzou's true sons. Guys, welcome back. It's episode five. So by now, we basically just come in and start giving each other crap. There's no nice intros. There's no, hey, James, how you doing? Uh, but this week, we do have to be a little bit nicer because we have another Miz true son from Mizzou, Bud Sasser, joining us, former receiver. He led the team in receiving yards and catches in 2014. Bud Sasser, how are you doing, sir? This is such a pleasure. Hey, I appreciate the intro. Uh, I'm excited to see the guys. Uh, this is great. I look forward to it. Um, I look forward to the the moments that we'll have in this uh, episode. So I'm, I'm excited to be here. Well, James and Henry, how are you guys doing? I just realized um, in, the, in the midst of all the chaos, you know, do a lot of shows during the week, a lot of Chief stuff, a lot of Mizzou stuff. Kendall Lawrence is supposed to be in here too. And I sent him this like three times and he got mad at me last week. So we have a major call out that's going to happen uh, later on, but James and Henry, how are you guys doing? Welcome back. Episode five. We still like each other enough to keep doing this. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> you have to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah. We love this. Uh, we enjoy it every week. I look forward to it every single week. Uh, of course, it's good to have Bud on. Uh, so it's awesome just to kind of keep it going and then get some new guys in here, new faces and, just keep uh, the little bitty show that me and James do got going on for everybody else. And <laughs> a little more flavor. There we go. Uh, yeah, I need us a little bit of bud. I'm not a drinker, but I'll take me some Bud Light. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, y'all. There you bud, go. <laughs> I, have so, I, I have such fun memories, bud. Of um, So down in 2014, you guys played at A&M. Uh, we met your like your whole family was there, just giant tailgate. Yeah, you, you the guys, infamous tailgate. You have the literal best family, best people I've ever met. That was the funnest, yeah. best uh, fried catfish I've ever had, and best all the yeah. sassers, man, all of them. This is before yeah. NIL day, so they had the sasser Ooh. shirts, but you just weren't getting any scratch <laughs> off of it. Man, you know, but I did turn it into the foundation. So Sasser Nation Foundation, that's where that came from. So I'm glad you brought that up. I appreciate that alley -oop right there. That's a smooth that's cool. transition. I was going to ask you about the foundation, the Bud Sasser Foundation. Tell us a little more about it, how people can check it out, man. Man, well, they can check out uh, Sasser Nation uh, at sassernation.com. Um, basically, we are giving a scholarships to high school seniors in Denton ISD. Uh, it's been going on now about five years uh, where we've been granting scholarships. Uh, and we try to get one to each, uh, at least uh, every high school in Denton uh, for right now. Um, we're trying to expand and, and grow and get some of these students who uh, weren't offered full rides to college, uh, get them some money in their pocket so uh, that transition can be a little bit easier. That awesome. is awesome. That sounds a lot like James's gig driving people back and forth from downtown Columbia back in the day on his golf cart. Maybe no, a little more I charitable. That, I, yeah, I think what Bud's doing is a little bit better than what I'm doing. <laughs> well, Bud, that's Keeping awesome. people safe. For, for those that aren't aware, <laughs> for, for those that aren't aware kind of, uh, of your, your post Mizzou days, you got drafted uh, by the St. Louis Rams back in 2015. But um, it was immediately discovered that you had an underlying heart condition. Mm -hmm. And talk about kind of from there what your post football life's been like, kind of the disappointment of that medical situation, and then kind of what's led you to today. Man, I think uh, trying to just find life, you know, uh, in myself outside of sport was uh, quite the journey. Uh, but I mean, and also being able to continue living my life the way I was before. Uh, and uh, that can be a little bit of a, a challenge when you you had some individuals telling you you know one thing, and then other doctors telling you a completely other thing. So to kind of hit on that, you know, there was one doctor who disqualified me, and it happened to be the one with the team who had never seen this before. Um, the others, I was actually cleared. So disclaimer: just crazy how life works, but. Uh, just to also add to that, it's just, man, uh, I kind of started finding more of myself just through my uh, foundation and just giving back to these students and uh, being able to see their drive kind of kept me going, hearing their stories, uh, reading their essays when they would submit that, uh, just definitely kept me uplifted and uh, just made me want to, you know, get up and just bounce back, you know, like that, that's life. And if I'm sitting here, you know, trying to encourage them to overcome obstacles, I got to make sure I'm doing 
uh, the same thing and leading by example. So it's kind of what I've been doing lately. Uh, that, well, at least that's how I got here now. Currently in law school at Mizzou, so uh, you know, trying to trying to move this move the needle a little bit and uh, you know do some great things there. That's tremendous, bud. And I've always thought you just as one of the more stand up people that I can remember meeting just a guy that was going to succeed at anything you did and your football career spoke for itself. But James, I want to kind of go to you on this because, you know, Bud's uh, he's the, he's the young guy, the, uh, you know, of your guys' class, of course, he's uh, didn't graduate till 2014. Um, so what was it like when Missouri has this plethora of, re of receivers you, when you come in and you see guys like Marcus Lucas and DGB comes in uh, you got Jimmy hunt out there. There's a lot of receivers. Uh, Damian, how good, Dare I leave him out, Damian Washington? What what was the, what made Bud kind of stand out, um, kind of amongst those guys? And did you ever think that he'd come to the point where he's literally the team's leading receiver as senior year? No. Better tell, better tell the truth. <laughs> better, better tell the truth. <laughs> tell uh, tell it. Night, tell it now. Back to, <laughs> we go back to high school rivals. We played. Uh, I guess it was. When we were on varsity, maybe two or three years in a row that we played, and it was always always a good game, and he was always a guy that our defense was preparing for in practice throughout the week. So I knew he was a good receiver going into it. As a quarterback, you get a feel for receivers that are easy to throw to, uh, especially for certain types of balls. So like fade ball, slant, post, out, stuff like that. You just get a comfort level with them. And uh, Bud, to this day, I'd put him in, out of all the receivers that I've got to throw to, top five with uh, body control and like ball judgment. He was always really good with that. So it was easy to throw to him. Um, no matter what the route was, it was just, I knew I could throw it to him and he'd somehow go up and get it or go down and get it. You know, not that I ever threw any too low for you, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it was always just really easy throwing to him. And uh, a lot of those guys too, but the, the personality, the relationship for me, that uh, not that it should, but that definitely helped out a lot more. The, I was pretty close with Bud, and, and yeah, we met pretty well. He always called me Michael Ray, and, uh, and it just made it even easier to throw to him. And it's those little things that kind of what we talked about on our episode last week that in the offseason, the training, uh, the practices, that's the stuff that shines through and come game time. And it's not just, oh, this is a talented receiver or this is a talented quarterback. Anybody can throw to him. Uh, or anybody can catch it from him. It's like those things that you build in the off season and practice in the training room. Uh, that's that's the stuff that shows on the field. And with Bud, it was really easy all around. Henry, do you echo oh, a lot of those sentiments? What was uh, what was your thoughts on on Bud as he comes up through the ranks, man, and really exerts himself? Uh, it was awesome, man. Uh, I remember watching Bud in one on ones. That was like my favorite time to watch Bud. Uh, <laughs> the routes he would run, like you just get chills, like. <laughs> <laughs> you just want to turn your face. He'd be nasty, man. He'd run some crisp routes, come out of his break so smooth. And uh, that's just one of the things I always used to enjoy, just watching whoever had to go up against me in one-on-ones because you knew a nasty route was coming. And then, of course, if James gives him a little high ball, he's going to go up and get it too. So it just it got me excited <laughs> and stuff like that. And I knew it was going to turn over to the field just the same. So it was, it was awesome just to enjoy watching those moments. Uh, Bud, you come in from Denton, Texas. Crowded receiving room, man. Um, you got guys ahead of you like TJ Mo, who I forgot to mention in the first uh, the first go around, who, who would led, led the team in receptions, I think, in 2011. Uh, just looking around, man, Marcus Lucas, the guy that goes on to the NFL. And, and there's just so many guys that even guys like Jaleel Clark, who were under the radar a little bit. Landis Woodland was, I think, a class before you. Just what, what was it like coming into Mizzou and looking around and seeing kind of the receiving talent that was there? And, you know, how, how do you – you rise above how do you get up there and how do you start getting reps man how did how did you kind of perceive that when you first came in um i think it deals with a lot of uh who i played against growing up i mean i think that's uh honestly not talked about enough um maybe henry can attest to this james can attest to this playing football growing up in texas you're playing against some high level athletes who might not make it to the college level for whatever reason but when I got to Mizzou, and I remember watching the first practice, and uh, if y'all ever get a chance to get EJ Gaines on here, um, I definitely uh, ask that y'all ask him to back me up on this and just see if I'm telling the truth. But 
watched the first uh, 707 practice that summer we arrived in June um, and knew right then that, you know, that I would be playing here soon and uh, well, I thought it was going to be soon, mm -hmm. but uh, I was like, you know, right there, if I, if I have to stay here for five years, there's no way I won't be drafted. There's no way I won't have a successful at least a year. But, uh, and I say that not in a cocky way. I just was confident coming in just because of the people that I got a chance to play with growing up. And I was never the best athlete. I was never the best receiver. Um, there was always somebody who was just super, super talented. And I just had to work hard to like try to keep up. Um, so in doing that, I ended up being able to, you know, kind of push through not really playing that much my first few years because I just knew what I had. And uh, like Henry said and James, like I just, you know, I was able to do those things um, just in the off season. Like I, I knew what I could bring. And uh, when it, when it was time to actually show up and be able to be that guy, like I just, it, that wasn't a shock to me. So it, I, you know, I, we're going to get into the 2013 season in depth on a later episode, and Bud, hopefully you can come back for that. I'm trying to get a lot of that team together. EJ Gaines is one definitely we want to get a hold of and a whole lot more, hopefully. So we're going to, you know, save the, the deep dive for that. But you, you wind up with 26 catches, 361 yards uh, in 2013. And that's with, you know, Doriel Green Beckham really emerging. Mm -hmm. Marcus Lucas is already there. What was the, what did that season mean to you? And what was it, the sentiment like? We'll get into this deeper again, but you know, you guys beat Georgia, you throw a touchdown pass. We can get that on film. We may not have a clip of Franklin throwing one. We do have Bud Sasser throwing the touchdown to, uh, to the Ladamian right against Georgia, but, but James gets hurt in that hurt in that game. And what was it kind of like though, for those next few weeks, Maddie Mox got to come in and you guys got to keep winning and you do. Uh, what was that like when, when James went down, what was the perception? Okay. Uh, let me, let me, I'm going to backtrack real quick because that room to compete with, that 13 receiving core, yeah, extremely difficult to uh, one get the ball while you're <laughs> in that room. <laughs> Everybody wanted the ball. Everybody had the ability to make plays and deserve to get the passes thrown to them. Uh, so it was challenging then, 100%. Uh, just because you know, at whenever your name is called, like you just have to be ready because it wasn't enough balls that were going to be able to come your way when you got the three headed monster in the backfield with running backs. Then you got James. Then you got really, you really had 10, maybe, maybe 12 receivers that could play anywhere in the country that year that I feel very confident about. Um, so, but to, to kind of go to the Georgia game and to kind of speak on that uh, when James went down, I think it was a, uh, one, that was a very cheap play uh, to whomever, if they ever come across this. I hope you remember that that was mm. a very cheap play. And uh, I don't know if James will say it, but uh, watch it. You know, don't know what you're up to today. Hopefully, you know, that's not your approach to things in life right now. But uh, I'll just call it how it is. But it is what it is now. But uh, anyways, at that point, we knew what we had as a team. Um we knew to like who we could really lean on. And at that point it was just, you know, Maddie just needed to warm up his arm. He, it didn't matter if he could throw a 10 yards or 50, just hike, just say hut. And that's, you don't have to worry about anything else. And I think that I know that's how I looked at it. And I think that our offense definitely looked at it that way. Like Maddie, don't worry, don't stress, just hike the ball. That's it. We're going to do the rest. James, did you see his that touchdown? Uh, you probably had been in the locker room getting examined, but Bud throws this touchdown to sort of seal the game and LaDamian. And the truth of it is, LaDamian wasn't even open, really. Well, James, right <laughs> no, that hold on, touchdown. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Receiver's always open with the right ball. The right button. Hey, all he needed was the all he needed was me to launch it to him. And, well, uh, right. how, how, how did you rate the form, the follow through, the all of it? How how was it? Yeah, I'd say the form uh, on a scale of one to seven. Form was about a five and a half. Uh, follow through was a three, but the delivery was a seven out of seven. It was it was on point. Um, I'll take that. That's actually that. yeah. That's actually one of the things that uh, I attest to. I think a lot of quarterbacks attest, but especially myself is I might not have been the most accurate quarterback, 
But the thing is, I tried to throw a catchable ball. And so it was always known for me, at least, I never really threw it that hard. Um, and so for the times when I wasn't accurate, as long as I didn't throw it 100 miles an hour, it gave the receivers an ability to adjust to it. And sometimes it was, you know, when they're wide open, obviously I need to get it to them. But when they have the one-on-one -on -one matchup and, you know, it's them or the, the defensive back, I was always confident with our receiving core that I could throw it somewhere in the area and they would get it. So I would try and be a little bit accurate, but for the most part, just give it some touch and let them do the rest. Because, I mean, they're there for a reason, you know. They don't need the perfect ball, so to speak. Uh, they just need it close to them. They're going to make the play. Now, of course, Thanks. every now and then when, you know, you throw it bad and receiver looks back at you, he's like, oh, over the shoulder, over the shoulder. <laughs> or, you know, I want to hear, want to hear. You got a couple of those. Uh, I always joke. From, and say, from who? One of these days, who? Who do you hear that from? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no names, all right? No names, no names. <laughs> I was just like, man, one of these days when you drop a perfect pass, I'm like, catch it like this, squeeze like this. But I never did that, you know. <laughs> but but no, it was uh, – I did see it when I was in the locker room uh, through all the, the tears. I mean, I'd been through a rough season the previous year. Uh, just in that for probably 30 minutes after I got hurt, I was, I was thinking very selfishly. Like I was just frustrated thinking, man – Cause me, I was in the locker room, obviously. They're not around the guys. They're out there playing. I'm just like, why is this happening to me? And, you know, feeling sorry for myself. And so um, I was crying a lot. And then they turned on the TV. And it was actually probably 20 seconds or so before that play had happened. And uh, it was it was pretty awesome to see. I mean, it, you always want your team to su succeed. And that's how Bud said. Like, once I went down, uh, you can't necessarily – doesn't matter who goes down think, oh, no – you know, we're done for, or like, let's just give up. I mean, you got to have that mentality to keep going. Cause I mean, there's 120 plus other guys that are, uh, that you're counting on you or counting on the team to succeed. And you can't just throw in the towel once one guy goes down. Henry, the offense was so good that year. I mean, you had a one, two punch, you and Marcus Murphy at, at running backs. Uh, you saw what the offense was able to do with either Matty Mock or James Franklin through the air. It was maybe the most balanced offense uh, I can remember uh, in Missouri history. The numbers bear that out as well. Just what was your thoughts just in that offense in 13? Like you're back from injury, you're running on all cylinders, you're rushing for a thousand yards, and then you got this receiving core, you've got two capable quarterbacks. I mean, it had to be an era of invincibility at that point. Yeah, I mean, you said the right word, invincibility. Like we were above confident every week. Um, I know we talked about James going down and how the, the, the ship didn't stop rolling. Uh, that's the way it was supposed to be. So, so that's the way it was supposed to be. Uh, so these guys that we had, we knew whoever came up, who was whoever's time it was, they were going to show up and they were going to show up to actually play. Because uh, the way we practiced was, like I told you, a lot harder than a game was for anybody. Uh, we enjoyed practice more than we enjoyed the game. The game was just part of part of the the system for that week. So when it was time to play, like I I didn't care about anything that was going on. Bud, we've talked with James the about uh, the the Cotton Bowl before. So that and Maddie Mock would play a series, a game, right? Kind of regardless. But James is back from injury; he's good to go. I think Maddie comes in for a series, and I think he hits you right over the safety. Perfectly thrown, silhouetted in the back of the end zone, right? That's Matty mm -hmm. Mock. That's Marcus. To Marcus. Marcus. Oh, no. Marcus. oh, come on. Hey, but Mr. It's, Clint, we just talked about this. Okay. <laughs> hey, <laughs> but we, we me, talked about I'm, I'm, I'm going to let you finish that question what because I'm going to add to that. No, 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 no. Just talked about what? I mean, Henry 41, Murph 43, <laughs> and now you got, oh, bud, that was you in the back of the end zone, right? right? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I'd pull up highlights of the game, but my stream yard would slow to a crawl, guys. I don't have Google Fiber yet over here. <laughs> right, that no, was, that, that was Marcus. Uh, but um, go ahead. I want you to finish that because I got I already got something to say to it. Well, you know, Henry, or, you know, we talked with uh, Henry and James about, about this before, but James was kind of like felt a little slighted because uh, Maddie came off the field, I guess, and said that he didn't see that safety and that it was kind of a fluke. So... Is that kind of, is that what you were talking about? Yeah. <laughs> hey man, let me tell you this. This is what I give props to Maddie for. Maddie was a game day baller. Okay. And there were yeah. some things where it just like it, he don't know how it happened. It just happened. But this is what this is why I give credit to honestly the people around him. 
because that's how talented that team was. Like when I said all he needed to do was hike the ball, and this isn't a disservice to him by any means, it was just the people around him were that good. Like you could hand it off to him. Henry was having a hell of a season. He was cooking in the Cotton Bowl. Uh, of course, the week prior to, like, he everything was just hitting, like, the way it needed to. So at any point in time, you know, especially as a receiver, that was uh, – anytime one of them got the ball, you just wanted to make sure you – first of all, you just block. Block long enough. All you needed was about four seconds, maybe if that, three seconds – and let them run by, and then you just watch the show at that point. Shouldn't be, but that's what we were doing. <laughs> well, we're going to get into 13 in, in more depth, guys, but I kind of want to go to you, Henry, because you know you decided to leave uh, early and declare for the NFL draft, and I just kind of want to see what you, know, what you saw in 2014, if you saw much Missouri football at that time or kind of what, because – you know, this was a transitional year. 2013 was was special beyond belief. You guys go to the SEC championship game, one game from the national title, would have played Florida State uh, in the Rose Bowl for the national title, had that Auburn game gone your way. But 2014 is a 10-2 and two season for Missouri. The leading receiver is Bud Sasser. And the Missouri Tigers in 2014 won a game where I think Matty Mock threw the ball for 26 yards against Florida, and they go 10-2 and two and they just keep winning. Did you – what – what – about did you, how many games did you see in 14? Like, could you believe what you were seeing? Excuse Missouri me. just keeps winning despite some offensive ineptitude. But then in the end of the day, Bud's a thousand yard receiver. Russell Hansborough rushes for a thousand and the team really gets going towards the end of the season. Were you, were you proud of your boy? That's what I guess I'm trying to get out of here. Were you proud to see Bud kind of get up there and be the team's leading receiver? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're always proud. I mean, even today as, as a struggle it is, I'm still proud of Mizzou. But it was awesome to see those guys uh, keep building off of uh, what we started and what we wanted to start as a group. I think uh, just going back to when we first came on campus, like that was one of the things that all of us talked about in that group that came in together. I cannot wait till it's our turn. Man. It's our own mark for what Mizzou is and what Mizzou will be for the future. So uh, it was good to see all that stay, stay well together and see those guys go out there and win. They, they want SEC championship and the field – Running, I wish I was there today. Uh, <laughs> but it was right. awesome to see all that Bud standing over there on the wall, like it's just yeah. hey, <laughs> the I East. To to again. Like it just was like, man, I'm about to go <laughs> get in my jersey. <laughs> I'm to put on a jersey or something to come out there and play. But yeah, it was it was good to see it. It's good to see Murphy and you know? all. It was just it was a, a a sight to see those guys go out there and win the way they did. And keep that tradition going. Yeah, that scene was eerily similar to the year before against Texas A&M. So it's it's against Arkansas, got to win it to uh, get to the SEC championship game. And it was a tough, it was, I think, Missouri was down 14 to 6. You guys battled back and, and won that game. And it was another similar scene that we saw against A&M. And jubilation, we haven't probably seen since. Bud, that season started off with a, a an early season loss to Indiana. Mm -hmm. And you started the SEC slate with a 30 to nothing loss to, to Georgia at home. Talk Did about we get three points. We had three. No, we had six. No, that was the game. Matty Mott judo threw a defensive lineman though for the Georgia Bulldogs. If you remember that, but yeah, I, I, remember. I remember the resiliency that. of that team to come back and do uh, you. Yeah, I look at that defense, Marcus gold and Shane Ray. Those two were so instrumental. Lucas Vincent, that those guys up front, that defense mm -hmm. had to carry a lot of games. But by the end of the season, the offense was clicking too. What was that season as a whole like for you? Uh, I think, honestly, after those two losses, one, I think we knew the formula at that point. We knew what it took to get to Atlanta. That was the goal. Um, the leadership still wanted to like win big. We didn't want to have that year that we did before and make those guys feel like they were the only reason for getting to the East or to getting to the SEC championship game. So we wanted to backdoor it um, and be able to, you know, leave our legacy too and add to what that leadership did for uh, the 13 year. And just, uh, you know, there's a lot on the table and we got people out there trying to change their families' lives, trying to, uh, you know, they're playing for something bigger than just, you know, being on the field on Saturday, just the people in the stands, like they got families at home as well that were they were looking to, you know, take care of for the long run and be able to, 
you know, just set a tone for uh, Mizzou. And, uh, you know, something Marcus Golden would always say, you know, just uh, coming in, like, y'all, this is Mizzou. Like, you you a Mizzou Tiger, man. Like, you, you represent Mizzou. That's what it is. And you need to, like, look at that, not as if you're some subpar program. That was a guy whose motor ran on 100% all day and he loved mizzou he he felt that every day and he played like that every day and that would just kind of exude from him especially on game day he had come over there <laughs> yelling at me saying bud get going like get get these guys going man like it's on you you're the captain like you're you you're on the offensive leadership team like or excuse me you're the leader on the offense like get them going you just be like, oh, yeah, you now you're right. Like, <laughs> let, me go, let me go out here and make a couple catches, man. Like, um, but uh, it, we just wanted to do it again and just be able to get to Atlanta again and just uh, see if we could have a different outcome that time. I, I got to ask a tough question to all three of you guys. You all, all were teammates with these guys, and this is, you know, we would like to have fun, but we like to talk about, you know, some of the great moments and great players. And to me, these guys are all so meaningful, but. Uh, tell me, because uh, to me, Marcus Golden's a special person. We just, he's showing out for the Arizona Cardinals right now. He just had a sack last week. What maybe separates, what, what is the, someone like Marcus Golden, who's still in the league, you know, it's almost, it's been, uh, what, eight years uh, since, since he's been there. But someone like Shane Ray is, is out of the league. Coney Ely out of the league. What you saw, you guys were in, in rooms. You guys were teammates with those guys. What maybe made Marcus Golden stand out? Why did these other guys not make it? And what was Marcus Golden's like best attribute to make sure that he did make it? James, I'll start with you. Yeah. So going into it, I mean, a lot of guys will know, even some of the guys that have made it. Um, there's a lot of guys that are talented that could still be playing or should still be playing, never got the chance. But it's it's almost right place, right time. And that's not to discredit the guys that are there. But I mean, if you have the right guy in your corner um, and then you take opportunity at the right time, and you stick with them. I mean, you, I mean, you guys, see, everyone sees it. They'll, they'll see guys on teams where it's like, how is that guy still playing? You know, it's like, man, that guy's been in the league 12 years now, or especially with me and quarterbacks, you know, I'm like, what? Why don't you give me a $28 million signing bonus and I'll throw five picks, you know, like, <laughs> just stuff like that. But so when it comes to guys that make it like Shane Ray's out and Coney Ely's out, I, they did have opportunities and stuff, but not only is it just having those guys in your corner, but also being able to adapt if you don't have those guys in your corner. And so when you're going out there and you're performing well, maybe it's you don't want to, it's a change of attitude or uh, a change of work ethic, not necessarily giving more, but coming from a different approach. Because to an extent, I mean, you got to please the guys that want you there for the, in order to stay there. It doesn't matter how great you are, if, if it, whoever's in charge of keeping you there or has a big say in it, if you're not impressing them, or if you're not doing what they like, then you're going to be out of there. That's why you also see some players that struggle on some teams. They go to another team, and now they're thriving. You know, they're doing better than ever. And so you can't really – I'm not discrediting anybody saying it's just all luck or anything like that, but uh, it's definitely right place, right time helps. And then once you get that opportunity, just being able to adapt and continuing to adapt. And some of us are able to do it, and some of us aren't. And, I mean, Marcus Golden, he's – <laughs> like Bud said, he's always a hundred percent. You know, it wasn't ever just so so. I mean, he was always into it. I mean, before I really got to know him, I'm like, man, I don't know if this guy's gonna like tackle me in practice or what. <laughs> it's like, like, man, this. He, but that's just how he is, and I mean, it's working for him. He's doing well, and he's had a lot of success, and and that's awesome for him, man. We're we are happy for him, and it's definitely he's taking advantage of his opportunities. Henry, kind of same question to you, and I, you know, and I didn't even mention Michael Sam, SEC Defensive Player of the Year in 2013. Same thing; he was drafted by the Rams, as you were, Bud. So Henry, kind of, kind of going off what James said there, is kind of, kind of agree with James as far as some of that goes. Uh, yeah, I mean, everything James said was like, is absolutely correct, and I mean, the main thing is, are you correct for that system, and how long will you be correct for that system? Um, same thing with new players coming in each year; you can have a new coach uh, each year. And uh, that could change the way you play, change the way that system is set up for you to actually be successful. So uh, I know <clears throat> it's Shane. He's uh, one of those hybrid type out, outside linebacker DNs. So as that system changes, it changes his role. Hey, you got to go inside now. And, like that could change the whole dynamic of how comfortable and confident you are and uh, your abilities, which you know he can do it. It's just how long is it going to take him to get it figured out? And 
most of the time these coaches in the NFL they ain't got time. Like just, just you don't get it uh, on that first two times and start making plays. It's like, all right, hey, we got to go make a move. So it, it's it's very different. I know it was one of the things I struggled with when I when I was going through different teams. Like when I went to Minnesota, I was like, man, you got three plays in, in one play. Like, I was like, all right, we huddle him up. <laughs> I got to know all these calls, and you're gonna change it with the lines. Like, hopefully, whenever he opens to the right, I open to the right, and I go the right way. <laughs> it, 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 it can get confusing very fast. So I think uh, those guys that are still being successful, they're in the right place, and of course, they're playing their butts off. So uh, like, I, I enjoy watching every single one of the guys that I play with, and those guys before that as well. Bud, same to you, man. Same question to you. I, I think James hit on a lot of it. Uh, Henry just backed up a lot of it as well. Um, but I think, I mean, it's just right place at the right time. Uh, being blessed to like, you know, that that's your time and, you know, just capturing the moment, being ready when your number is called. Mm -hmm. uh, and that can, you know, you never know what can alter that, you know, family issues or money is financial issue, whatever it may be. Are you in the right headspace to be a doctor, like all of that. And so everything, it just has to work out. And I think why, you know, you may see a bunch of guys even today that's in the league. They're just like, man, I'm just, I'm blessed to still be doing this. Cause sometimes they look around and they notice like, Hey, this guy, there's a lot of talent right here. How I'm still doing this. It just, you know, or health issues, like no health issues, no injuries. Like people are just like, I don't even know how I made it this long. No, no major injuries. Like folks like uh, Henry who had crazy type of injury. A lot of people don't come back from that. Not just because of the actual rebuild of a knee or a leg, but the mental side of it. And a lot of people don't have that in them to continue. Um, so there's a lot of factors. And I think at the end of the day, you just got to take uh, what you can and make the most out of every situation. And uh, I think that's what you see a lot of times on, you know, the end, like folks from Mizzou getting out there, just trying to make the most of their situation. Bud, we're seven years removed um, from, from your time at Mizzou, man. It's, 2021, Missouri's had two different head coaches since that time. Uh, Missouri started off two and three. It's been a rough start to the season here this year for the Tigers. What does the does Mizzou mean to you today? Um, you know, we talk about Mizzou made, we talk about what a family it certainly was during your time there. What does kind of the university mean to you today? And kind of how often do you get back and, and things of that nature? Um, well, I mean, I, I I came You're back there. in eight. Yeah, yeah I'm here yeah. now. But uh, I came back in 2018 for more school uh, opportunities, and, and then again this August I uh, came back again. Um, so for me, as a first generation college graduate, um, that meant a lot to me and uh, a lot to my family. So being able to uh, experience, you know, one winning at a high level, uh, just what campus can be like and what that that whole vibe can be like and just being able to see how your life can change through education but also through sport that uh you know that's what mizzou means to me just you know it played a significant part in my life so i mean you know i love it out here i hate the cold but uh, i love everything else about it so uh yeah that's kind of that's kind of where i'm at with it uh, i think it's a great place for you know, future athletes to come and be a part of, because it really is, it's what you make of it. Mm -hmm. And honestly, a lot of people don't know how fun Columbia can be, what you can really learn from Columbia in a lot of different aspects, but also uh, just being able to come here and, you know, Clint, you got the background full of people in the stadium, but <laughs> people get upset. It's been a while. You, <laughs> Correct. But you know what? This, the thing is, if, you, if you're not going to win the game, they don't want to come. And I think it is what it is, so whether that's right or wrong, whether that's right. I learned early on with with Mizzou <laughs> that, there, that there is some folks and I'm not there's no maybe it is shade folks who are going to be in that those stands. 
If you start losing games, they are done. However, you win games, they're going to be there. And we knew what talent we had. We knew that it's definitely fun playing in front of a packed stadium. So win the game. <laughs> you know, like it is what it is. It just It's entertainment. You want to win, of course, but you also want to entertain. It's fun. It's fun seeing James throw for 300 yards. It's fun seeing Henry turn the corner in 2013 in that first game back and going for 60-some yards. That is fun. There's nothing. Is it 60, 70-some yards? Sorry if I shorted you. Yeah, it's all good. It's a blur. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a blur watching him run past, too. So, <laughs> like – <laughs> but that, that's fun. And when you're not experiencing that and you're not having big time breakout plays, you're not seeing a Michael Sam or uh, Shane Ray, Marcus Golden, just terrorizing an offense from any sort of level, whether it's a Georgia, whether it's a you name it, A&M, you, whomever, Florida, and seeing those guys like uh, – you know, the like bigger name schools, honestly, at that time, until we did what we did, like you got the chance to like show yourself in front of a, you know, a big time program. And when you do that, now you've elevated your own program to being considered on that level. And as a national, you know, ranking, that'll help you, you know, validate that your team is, is really that deal. So I think, you know, it's not always just about ranking, but you you know what you have, and you you just got to be honest with yourself. Well, I think it was to me a true pleasure watching Bud watching you play. Uh, I I love the smoothness in your game, James. I got to ask you this question: If you could take, you know, you're building a perfect receiver. All the receivers you play with at Mizzou, you're you're building a perfect one, right? A prototype. Mm-hmm. What do you take from Bud Sasser out of that, or does he does he make does any attribute he has make the list? <laughs> <laughs> Some gonna make that list. Something's gotta make it. <laughs> you said body control. Is it body control? Is it hands? Is it route running? It's gotta be one of those three. Um, I would say definitely not the fair skin. Um, wow. That was not an option, actually. Yeah, not one of the options. Yeah. <laughs> For me, it is. That's always, always an option. If that's the case, um, then, then I'm in it, I guess. <laughs> Look at hey, him. it's my perfect my perfect receiver, right? All right? <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> yeah. No, I'd probably say it's James, it's between don't, hands. Don't and body go against control. your own. I'd probably say hands. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm down the middle, baby. I'm down the middle. <laughs> don't, don't go against your own, James. <laughs> a running joke here, still, but I'm glad you said that. That's a running joke here. Uh, hey, James hey. is a fitter, if you will, in many ways, right? <laughs> right. Um, yes, yes. No, I'd probably say hands. Definitely between hands and body control. But he always had really good hands. I mean, they were soft. They were they were late and. And when I say soft, physically, yes. When I, when I dap him up, I'm like, ooh, but okay. He got some soft hands. Huh? But I mean catching wow. the ball soft, you know. When he, it's, uh, <laughs> he's always, it's always really easy. It was smooth. And then the late hands, it's, you know, not letting the DB know the ball's coming by putting your hands up too early. And he was really good at that. So I'd probably I'd probably take his hands. Fair enough. I was uh, – I can I agree with that. I, I loved watching uh, – I always thought he was very precise. Mm-hmm. Playing receiver is a science. That's what I played, you know, growing up in Pop Warner and in high school, guys. So nobody ever called on me back in the day to help out. But uh, Henry, for you. Hey, you just need the right quarterback. That's what I always said. Uh, Henry, for you, coming from uh, more of the Southern Texas, you know, Missouri recruits Texas. It's a hotbed. It still is. Missouri is really trying to make more inroads in Texas than they have in a long time. Henry, you're kind of from the the South Texas part down there. These two are from Dallas, you know, you know Dallas area. They play each other. They had a rivalry going. Was there a t- did Texas guys kind of stick together at, at Mizzou? Was there kind of a Texas thing at all? Did that ever happen? Was that a thing? Uh, you can say to an extent, uh, like as far as like living arrangements and stuff. But uh, we mostly we all mingled in well together. Like you you wouldn't know where anybody was from unless they told you. Uh, but there was a lot of Texas guys. Um, and of course, when you first get in, you want to be around all Texas guys, but that doesn't happen. Uh, 
but my roommate was he was from Detroit, so like they definitely uh, <laughs> shuffled us in pretty quickly. And I mean, we just all gelled together. You knew who was from Texas, but you didn't know who was from Texas. Uh, so it just—I don't think it was just more of us sticking together. It's just we we became a family, and like that was. I got to go home to Texas, but that's about it. Uh, and I don't think that was a thing where we had to hang out with each other. Well, guys, I want to give you this opportunity uh, Henry, uh, for you, Henry and James, both of you guys, to ask Bud Sasser a question, anything. I've had to I've had to just come up with stuff out of the crystal clear blue sky here, mm-hmm. and, I, and I missed on one. So James and, and Henry, each ask something of Bud maybe you don't know or from back in the day or something from life, anything. James, start with you. Life. Life. Wow. Politics. Life. Who's Politics. your favorite teammate? Uh, all right. Yeah, go. Favorite teammate. Uh, great question. <laughs> I, I don't, I honestly don't know if I had like one favorite teammate because this, this is, this is not because y'all are on here. Both of y'all were, <laughs> both, both of y'all were top tier, but, uh, we just had a really, really good group of folks. So it's hard to pick one favorite teammate. Uh just because, you know, if you if you made me laugh, which just about everybody on the team could do, uh that that was that was good enough for me. Yeah, Bud's the uh little side note, Bud's the the reason I wore a visor in, uh, at, at all. Yeah. When practice, Bud was like, hey, Michael Ray, why don't you try on this helmet here? <laughs> I was like, all right. So I tried it on, and he's like, oh, you know, clean boy. <laughs> I was like, okay, I guess, I'll, I guess I'll try one. And then it just stuck from there. But my Jeez. question, Bud, speaking of not betraying your own, uh, how's married life? Man, it is great. It is great. Uh, so I am – Excited, just got married in May. Um, so yeah, that's where I didn't get the, a wedding invite. Oh, yeah, you know, limited COVID. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> hey, it's a, it's a, hey, limited invites, man. COVID, you know, touché, COVID regulation. Touché, you guys right. are from Texas. Come on, there's no limited anything. COVID regulation, man. COVID regulation. <laughs> Uh, so, <laughs> you know, so which is that 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 was great. The reception and everything was great. I would honestly, I, I had uh, when we first built out the list, I, I really did have so many people from the team that was on this list, and she's like, "Yeah, like your whole football team can't make it. Like we really don't have that. We don't have that kind of number, like to where we can be like we feeding everybody plus the football yeah. team. So, um, but." Yeah, it's great. Kids in the nice, future? Man. No, that's what's kids. Uh, I mean, I'm sure down the line, you know, you see the little ones uh, running uh, running around and yeah, in the Franklin household, in the Josie household. So, uh, you know, down down the line, right? But right now, right now, it's real. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's, hey, that's right. what's awesome though. Henry touched on it before. Is it's like you know we might not see each other for years, might not talk to each other for years. But as soon as we get back together uh, mm-hmm. on here or, or something, it's just like we just saw each other the other day in class or practice. And so that's what's Man. that's what I think is really awesome is, I mean, all the guys you're talking about wanting to have on here, it's and I know these guys can attest to it. It's just it doesn't matter if it's been three years or four years or six years. It's like you see him and it's just like old times. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. I've been smiling this whole time because I've just like <laughs> been waiting to talk with y'all. Like, even though I can like pick up the phone and call y'all, I was really just like, I can't wait to talk to them on this podcast. So. You just wanted, you wanted, you wanted to make sure I was involved, and I know I get it, but yeah, yeah, that's it, that's it, that's it. <laughs> no, we uh, the, but I think the last time I saw you, buddy, we you guys did a right after you guys graduated, you did a autograph signing at most sports up here in Liberty. You mm-hmm. and maybe like, oh God, who was all up there? Marcus was up there. EJ mm-hmm. Gaines, I think was I mean, that might have been the year before, but you guys, you guys were all up there, yeah. and I mean it was rock star status. It was lines out the door, and now they only have Chiefs players in there doing that stuff, man. And it was it, it reminds mm. me of that. That's what it was, and it's like, man, Mizzou needs to get back to that point where you got identifiable people that you know that fans identify with, and that that they treat like rock stars, like you. That they definitely did for you guys, man. Vincent was there. Lucas mm-hmm. Vincent Dog was up in there. <laughs> <laughs> 
Hey, I, right. Shout out, shout out to Louis V. He's taking care of his little one right now. And, yeah. Uh, his, his, his household. So shout out to you, Louis V. I know. I want to try to get him for the 13 one. Guys, that's our next goal. I want to get this, the 2013. I want it to be the biggest reunion possible. I need all of your guys' help to do it because funny enough, a lot of these guys don't respond to me. They might respond to you guys. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Just guessing. So that's my next goal. Like, you like the feds, man. You like the feds. You know they they, <laughs> yeah. they, might, they, they might not pick up when you first go, but you know let, let James and Henry let, let James and Henry do the groundwork. <laughs> yeah. So my big one for that is we got to get Maddie Mock and we got to get uh, we got to get Michael Sam. So Maddie Mock is is a tough one. He's like a unicorn for me. So <laughs> he was the best man, right? Was he in your wedding, James? Right. Yeah, he's you were one of his? my groomsmen, him and uh, Henry. Yeah, yeah, he's so, one of my groomsmen. I, I'll reach out, you know. I'll see what I see. I can see what I do. I see what I do. <laughs> I mean, that well, we're gonna make it happen, guys. We got to do. It. That's why we kind of saved the thirteen yeah. stuff because thirteen, is such a special situation, and all of your guys' careers, you know, they all they cross paths in different years and different situations, they, and they were all important to me, guys. And as a fan, I tell you guys this all the time, and I've gotten to know you know Henry and James so well doing this, and they're just so great. And they you know they put up with me. They're you know I'm sitting here just kind of trying to facilitate. I'm a guy that was just there you know as a fan and as a kind of a, at the time a wannabe media member. And you guys were the ones that made all the memories. So I truly appreciate it. You guys are awesome, and it's just been it's been a blast for me. I mean I, I mean I you guys were. To me, no different. Th- I mean, at the time, Mizzou football was bigger than the Chiefs here in Missouri, guys, and that's no joke. Yeah, uh, Pat- I, I don't know what it looked like from the professional side of things. I really, I really don't. But I know we enjoyed the hell out of each other in that year. I mean, James came back with a visor and two sleeves on. <laughs> Like I was like, oh, it's a wrap. I know we're not losing. I know we're not losing. James, oh, man, you see James out there looking like a creative player, <laughs> war number one, like visor, everything. I'm like, oh yeah, we this is gonna be a great time. It's gonna be a great time. I can't wait. I can't wait. I yeah. think, oh. <laughs> that, hey, hey, right. And that's when I was like, okay, because hey, I'm not gonna lie, Clint, like James, James talked about his accuracy early that you know he might not have been yeah. the most accurate person. But being the most accurate QB is giving your receiver a ball to catch, not the perfect ball. You know, it was a ball to catch. And because James took that approach of not just giving you the perfect ball, it made it very easy for any receiver walking this earth to catch a ball. If you had any sort of body control, hands, and just a go get it mentality, not the jump ball like uh well it's not really perfect so i I probably won't go get it but he made it pretty simple so i mean then you got number 20 back there Mm. dominant dominant man man and uh (laughs) but i'm no i'm I'm glad y'all had me on because you know one hank i'm glad to see you doing well uh i'm I'm glad to see just you know y'all's families running around in the background you too james and uh you know, y'all played at a high level and, you know, pushed me to play at a high level. And uh, I don't know if I know James knows, but Henry, Henry, Henry practiced a certain way. Like he would, he practiced. Don't get me wrong. He practiced. He practiced hard. He, he practiced hard. But, it, you know, you could you could tell that Henry had like a 10th gear. And uh, so he practiced hard. But then game day. It was a complete, like, turn up notch. And so, right. Hank, I appreciate you because I took that with me in all of my years. Like, because I was like, if Henry can turn up like this on Saturday and really get to another level from how he practiced, even though he practiced hard, I was like, yeah, I can I can turn it up on Saturday and really be locked in <laughs> like that. So I'm going to let you know now. When we were enjoying our summer months and, uh, you know, <laughs> coming to practice, <laughs> coming to practice, coming to practice, and, uh, you know, and doing what we needed to do and, uh, you know, just making the most of it. Man, you were a heck of an athlete. So were you, James. Um, he didn't tell you that, you know, James was like basically ran over all of us in uh, high school and middle school. 
<laughs> and we never beat Banks. We never beat him. And, and he was in our newspaper. It's a big, big, big front page, big front page, like picture that that read King James, and and in the Denton Record Chronicle. Wow. I'm at home. I'm at home. I go get the paper, like thinking, like let me go see if I made the paper or something. It's James, just big, big all across King James. Yeah. So, uh, but man, I appreciate y'all, man. I, I didn't know if y'all were editing uh, or getting ready to close out, but I wanted to make sure I said that because I I love oh, yeah. playing with y'all. Yeah. I gotta find that. Somebody yeah, please awesome. come up with that. Somebody please come up with that newsprint or clipping. I've got it. Or it's on Google somewhere. <laughs> yeah, it's I big. just tried a quick Google search to no avail. But we, <laughs> we're gonna have to dig yeah, this up. Huh? James probably got it. Yeah, he has it. Yeah, he ain't gonna show us. Hanging on, hanging on my wall right now. <laughs> so. I, guys, before we go, this is just it's just absolutely off topic, not even Mizzou related at all. But so we talked to Bud. We we had, you know, were talking with James a few weeks ago about just hey, like what what Mizzou players were you aware of, kind of growing up? And he's like, oh yeah, well I didn't really watch college football. I was playing ping pong. So I found another person, James, uh, a quarterback. In fact, one that uh, resides here in Kansas City right now. That was the exact same human as you, apparently in high school, and that's Patrick Mahomes, right? Just article just comes out in the athletic today that says Patrick Mahomes' best sport is ping pong, and he would rather humiliate somebody on a ping pong table than in football. And he said he was it was devastating the way he would do people. So I, I got to get a game between you two. Maybe we could do, get that together for charity or something. Mm. You and Patrick Mahomes. You no, know, there's uh yeah, there's there's typically there's always been three things I bragged about: my jump rope skills, okay. uh, so far. super hot wife. <laughs> and uh my ping pong skills all right now there's you know when when my when my boys when my teammates you know they're out you know getting to know each other and stuff in the off season thursday friday night saturday nights they got a ping pong tournament at mizzou and just with uh being mostly asian had about 580 of them and <laughs> i placed 26th 26th and it was only because i couldn't return to serve all right so I don't care who it is, Patrick Mahomes, Bill Belichick. Uh, you put him in front of me, I'll give you a show. Oh, <laughs> man. I, like I want it. that to happen. So it was 480 Asians and you, that's what it looked like? <laughs> uh, around there. It was a lot. I definitely, definitely. 480 uh, people. That's hilarious. Oh. <laughs> it, there's a bunch weird. of people. I mean, they, they always did because they, yeah, it was, oh, I got some stories. <laughs> guys we're gonna do this again bud it's been such a pleasure great stuff man such great memories of you your family i i you know i think back to that day is uh, back at texas a&m one of the best days i've ever had and i've been to every sec football stadium i've been i've been everywhere and that day really stands out your family is amazing bud and you uh so proud of you and everything you're doing with your foundation when everybody check that out and yeah, well let's do it again let's get uh, let's get a 13 thing going and we'll I'll, I'll cut together some highlights and we'll just have a blast man we'll do it soon and we'll be in contact guys thanks so much for joining us on mizzou's true sons yeah they are the good true talking sons. to you bud oh yeah appreciate you getting on appreciate all of y'all man it's good talking to everybody yeah, Appreciate it, man. This brought back uh, some some great memories and uh, definitely got my heart pumping a little bit. So uh, I, I appreciate y'all, man. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Thanks for the words, bud. Right on. Man.